a lie is not from God. And we can see this in Numbers chapter 20, verse 16. In one of the Ten Commandments, they said, Thou shalt not be a false witness against your neighbor. Some version says, Thou shalt not lie against your neighbor. So thou shalt not lie. We know that lie is not from God. So if lie is not from God, how did it originate on earth? What is the origin of lie? And I just want to say that lies originated with sin. The first sinner being Lucifer, who we all know that became the devil. See, in fact, we can see the first lie that was told on earth was from Lucifer to Eve. You know, when we all know the story of the beginning, when the Satan, you know, when the snake, the serpent came and said to Eve, Let's go to Genesis so we can see it. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 from verse 4 to 5. I read. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Quick question. After Adam and Eve them ate the food, did they physically die? So what did he do there? He told them part of the truth. He told them what looked like the truth while omitting that if they eat that fruit, they would spiritually die. That is separating from God. And he himself knows that because he himself was with God and was separated. So he knows that more than anybody. And yet, he chose to omit that truth just so that he could deceive. So that he could say a false thing to draw the children of God away from God. That is the purpose of lies. We can also see more examples of lies in the Bible. We know some of our fathers of faith, some of the people that lived like lies, are, you know, we, we ourselves, we can call it white lies. Oh, I'm omitting, you know, this, not to say that. And that's the thing as Christians that we practice, we desire or we choose to say half the truth. We desire, we choose to do part of the truth, not completely. We, dis we choose to omit some things, but an incomplete truth is a lie. A lie with some extras is a lie. A truth with some additional things is a lie. And in our days today, in our lives today as Christians, if we know this, we are all filled with lies. We are all shown with lies every single day of our lives. You can be working on a project. You can be studying as a student for an exam. And you, you hear, oh, people hardly pass this test. And that lie comes into you and tells you, you will fail. You are a failure. Or even if you failed before in your lives previously, you start to believe in the lies that, oh my God, I might actually be a failure if I keep failing in the things that I try to do. Sometimes we hear things like, you're not attractive, you're not beautiful. Maybe because of what people have told us. Let's be real, like recently, I felt like I've added a bit of weight, right? And I've been thinking, okay, you know, I want to lose weight, right? I want to be more healthy. I was thinking about that. And that voice came to me and said, ah, you know, you're fat, though. Ah, you need to lose some weight, though. Uh, you're not looking as attractive as before. And then I, I, I was like, what? That's when I questioned that voice. I was like, what? What do you mean? Because the word of God says that I am beautifully and wonderfully made. 
Yes, you, you might be right. I have added weight. Now, I chose to make a decision to go and start working out and start eating better so that I can be more healthy. But that has nothing to do with me not being beautiful because God created me in his own image. And there you go. That voice always comes with a part of truth and an extra something to make it feel like, to make us, to deceive us. See, a lot of us, we can believe, oh, because I've, because I've added that weight, right? I am unattractive. I am not beautiful. So many things. And we as Christians have come to live our lives based on lies, based on our insecurities. But we thank God because today God has come to free us all in Jesus' name. So now that we recognize lies, right? We're going to ask the question, freedom from lies. What can free us from lies? And the answer is truth. So going back to our text that says in John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now, what is truth? <laughs> See, I was doing some research, right? And I was, you know, trying to learn more about truth. And sometimes when I um, read the word, I tend to try to know what that word means in Hebrew word because it gives more context to why that is described as the way it is. And I decided to research what truth was in Hebrew. And truth in the Hebrew word is emet. And this Hebrew word emet contains three Hebrew alphabets. I hope you can follow along with me. And these three Hebrew alphabets contain first, the first letter of the alphabet, of the Hebrew alphabet, which is a left. It's called a left, which we understand it as alpha or beginning. The second letter of this Hebrew, of this Hebrew word emet is the middle letter of the alphabet, which means mem which means middle, a present. And this last letter of the alphabet is also the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's like we, how we have 26 letters of English, and we have A, whatever is in the middle, and Z. And um, for them, the last letter is Tav, which also means Omega and the end. Showing that truth, truth has to have the knowledge of the beginning, the middle, and the ending. I don't know about you, but there is only one person who knows that. Which shows that truth is not a thing. Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus Christ. He is our God. Truth, he said, according to his word in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. And I read, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and is to come, the Almighty Jehovah. I added the Jehovah part, excuse me. He also said in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the truth. And in any situation that we are in, and we do not know what Jesus is saying. We are missing the truth. And we are living in lies. It's as simple as that, brethren. In any situation, when you're studying for an exam, like I said, and you feel like, oh my God, I'm going to fail this test. You ask, what does Jesus say about this? What does truth 
say, what is the truth? Don't base it off of your opinions. When you're facing conflict with your loved ones or even people that you don't even know, before you think, oh, I'm right or I'm wrong, because most of the time, let's be honest, we all want to be right, correct? Nobody wants to be wrong. But before you, you go based off your opinions thinking I'm right, ask, what is the truth? And brethren, I bring to us today the good news that this truth is already with us. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is already living inside of us. Now see, that is the good news. That God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come and die for us. To take our sins away. He gave us his righteousness so that we can be righteous before the Father. Not only that, in form of his righteousness that he gave us, he gave us his Holy Spirit which is also called the spirit of truth. As children of God, if we truly believe the good news, the good news that Jesus is taking away our sins and he's giving you the Holy Spirit to live in you, in you, not in the next one, but in you, if you truly believe that good news, not a version of your good news, but the good news, as simple, as perfect, as graceful as it is, you have the truth in you. And you are free from lies. And the word of God said that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And I want us to believe that today, that you are free from lies. Let us not live our lives anymore based on opinions of people, based on what we feel, based on our thoughts. But rather, let us live our lives based on the truth of God. We also have the word of God, which is also called the word of truth, which is our Bible that we have. So I urge us today to seek truth. Seek truth. He's a person. He's a person. He actually, he came here in the flesh so everything that a flesh feels, he feels. When he was going back to heaven, his body was gone from the tomb. Where is his flesh? Where is Jesus' flesh? He's transformed into God and sitting right beside God. But Jesus went also with his body. Transformed body glorified body. I have to put that. Let us seek him. He has made himself available for us through his words, my brethren, my friends. He has made himself available through the word and he lives in us through the Holy Spirit. Let us seek him. Spend time reading the Bible, trying to get to know him. Oh, Baba, come down to in your secret place and spend time and just say, Father, I do not care how my life seems, how people, what people are saying, but I just want to know you. Close the door. Chase your children away from your rooms. Whatever you have to do, go down and spend time with him. And when you are at work, when you are in the church, wherever you are, when you're eating, don't forget to spend time with him, the Holy Spirit. Now, this spirit of truth, let's see why. Let's see why he gives it. Let's see what he does. In the book of John 15, verse 26, NKJV, and I read, But to when the helper comes, 
whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me.